Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the place where we discuss the Lord's Recovery Movement of Witness Lee, also known as the Local Church Movement. Well, I have a couple more articles on shepherdingwords.com to talk about, and I've been looking forward to talking about these. There are two articles about what should a Christian's attitude be toward politics and what should a Christian's attitude be toward social activism. I'm going to combine these because they go well together and they're coming from the same place in the minds of the co-workers of Lord's Recovery in North America. Basically what they say is, to sum it up pretty quickly, is that a Christian should not be involved in politics except as a citizen voting, and a Christian should not be involved in social activism in a way of trying to change the world. Basically what they say is that Jesus and the apostles and disciples, there's no record of them getting involved in politics. Jesus didn't want to be an earthly leader. He wanted to be a spiritual leader. So he shied away from that, and none of the apostles were involved in politics. And also, they make the argument that God wants the world to be good, but all that will be solved when Jesus comes back. And in the meantime, we shouldn't get involved in social activism. We should be preaching the gospel and reading the Bible and praying and doing spiritual things. I believe that is an extreme view, and I'm going to make that case in this episode. In the first place, they rely too much on patterns. They show that Jesus did not get involved in politics, and neither did the disciples, and so they assume that's enough reason where we shouldn't. But Jesus didn't get involved in forming a corporation either. Jesus didn't get involved in having a family. Jesus didn't get involved in a lot of things that are legitimate and not unclean. So that argument's a little weak. Same for the disciples. We know that Paul was a tent maker, and we know that Luke was a physician, but you could easily make the argument that everybody or most people should leave their jobs and just rely on living by faith as preachers. But that would be a stretch, too, because the Bible never prescriptively says that. The Bible never says don't be involved in politics, and the Bible never says don't be involved in social activism. That's one thing. We know in the Old Testament, kings, Solomon, David, were servants of God. And we know that the priests were leaders of the country. So the idea that it's wrong to be involved in politics is a bit of a stretch. That's one thing. The other thing is, in the ancient days, 2,000 years ago, it was not that easy to become involved. They didn't have democracy. They didn't have basic citizen rights that allowed you to enter into social reform related to the government in a way that was safe and accepted and normal. In those days, if you protested about the government, you often just got arrested. And now we live in the age of democracy, which is self-governance. The citizenry governs themselves. The citizenry becomes the leaders. So the idea that we shouldn't get involved in the age of democracy when it's so easy to do so and it's safe to do so with the argument, well, you're going to become unclean and compromised, that's not a good enough argument. And the potential for good outweighs the potential for bad. Imagine, if you will, if all the leadership in the world was held by unbelievers. Is that the kind of world the Lord wants right now? That there's no Christian influence in government at all? C.S. Lewis said, and this was something that really opened my eyes, Christians should be involved in literature. Christians should be involved in the arts. Christians should be involved in entertainment. Christians should be involved in every aspect of human culture that is not just totally sinful. Because if we're not, then that part of human culture is ceded to the unbelievers and therefore to the enemy. Imagine entertainment and arts and literature with absolutely no Christian influence in it. And now imagine, let's say, half of all the artists, entertainers, writers, were strong Christians. Imagine the difference and imagine the influence. See, the gospel influences the world. Okay, they're supposed to be an influence. And to say the only way we're supposed to influence the world is by preaching directly the gospel and not giving a message that's been influenced by the gospel that can affect people, I think is a very, very short-sighted view. 
So I believe Christians can and should be involved both in politics and in social activism as the Lord leads. But for the co-workers of the Lord's Recovery in North America to just come out and flat say we shouldn't get involved in politics and we shouldn't get involved in social activism is a shallow and extreme view. And look at it this way. People in the Lord's Recovery, and all Christians for that matter, enjoy a freedom to exercise their faith and to spread their faith that was bought with the hard work of people who were social and political activists. Okay, human rights were won with activism, and those are human rights that we enjoy. And a large amount of those human rights were won by Christians who were activists. A very good example is the abolition of slavery. That was really headed up by Christians who in their conscience could no longer tolerate slavery, and slavery was ended. That was a human right that was proper. Now, they make the argument, well, Paul or Jesus did not try to stop slavery. Again, that was a different time. Back then, you didn't buck the government. You didn't fight it. If Paul would have tried to end slavery, he likely would have been killed a lot sooner than he was. So sometimes you have to make choices. I'm not saying that social activism should be necessarily always our primary focus. For many of us, the focus is the direct teaching and preaching of the Word of God, or prayer, shepherding, or that kind of thing. But to say that God doesn't want anybody to be involved in social or political activism is a very, very short-sighted and, frankly, distasteful view. It's a little bit ungrateful to the people who worked hard to produce a society where you have the right to actually preach that people shouldn't be active politically and socially. So think about that for a second. As you're writing your website that says don't be socially or politically active, realize that your right to do that and not get killed for doing it was won over by somebody who was politically and socially active. But beyond that, a lot of good can come from it. And here's the thing. The Lord's Recovery has a very, very extreme dispensationalist view that the church is supposed to be in its own little world and the world is over here and we influence the world very indirectly by people getting saved and somehow that works out to some good in the world possibly but it's not that big a deal and then eventually Jesus is going to come back and fix everything well when Jesus comes back he's definitely going to fix a lot there's no doubt about that all fixing ultimately comes from him but I believe that the kingdom of God is coming through the church and that the so-called parousia of the Lord the presence of the Lord that comes is coming in the church and that coming has influence on the world. We are salt and light. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Well, if you've got salt and light, what is the evidence that you have it? The evidence is the effect it has. People see light. People experience salt. If you say you have salt and light and you're not influencing anybody and nothing around you is changing, nothing about around you is being touched, then you better check your salt and light meter. So the church is supposed to influence the world. We are supposed to be the agent of change in the world. Yes, it's through the Spirit. Absolutely through the Spirit. It's not through fleshly political mechanisms. But to say we can't be involved in politics or we can't be involved in social activism, I think is wrongheaded. As long as you're led by the Lord, as long as you're living in the Spirit, in a democratic world, there are ways for Christians to get involved and influence the world in a way that can help directly and indirectly. Not only help people know the truth, but help create a situation that facilitates the spreading of the truth. In some countries, you cannot preach the gospel. How's that going to change? It's going to change by that country's government changing. They lament the fact that Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. That wasn't necessarily a bad thing, okay? It reflected the fact that Christianity had been accepted. They think somehow Christianity, if it's accepted by the world, that that's a bad thing. That's a kind of a backwards attitude. It depends on how they're accepting it and what is the effect of that accepting. Obviously, there was a kind of watered-down religion that was accepted, but the basic premise of Christ and the gospel, it's not a bad thing if the world overall accepts that. How is that bad? Imagine if all the leaders of all the nations in the world were Christians. 
Imagine if the leader of North Korea was a Christian. How would that change people's lives? So the attitude of the Lord's Recovery about politics and social activism is very short-sighted and backward and, in the end, counterproductive. Again, it's all based upon something Watchman Nee said or Witness Lee said a long time ago. And we all know that Watchman Nee changed his tune in the 50s and said we should become politically active. There are so many charities, so many ministries that have different types of influence. There's all kinds of ways you can serve other than simply teaching and preaching the Word of God. For example, George Mueller, he, for 40 years, I believe, ran an orphanage in England, and he never asked for any contributions. He always prayed, and God supplied his need for that orphanage. Let me ask you this. Does anybody believe that wasn't a work of God for him to have that orphanage? Would the Lord's recovery start an orphanage? Or is that too much of a fleshly religious work? And this attitude, oh, that's the work of the flesh. That's a fleshly religious work. That's not God's economy. What is God's economy? Well, we sit around and we read Witness Lee's ministry. Really? And then what happens? Well, then we do it again the next day and the next day and the next day. And what's the fruit of all this? What's the impact? What's the result? How is the kingdom of God coming in that? The book of James and the Bible in general makes very clear that the expression of faith is good works. And it doesn't just say those good works are the ones people in the Lord's recovery do. The Old Testament is full of admonitions to seek justice, to help the poor, to help the oppressed, to help the widow and the orphan, and to do good, to feed people, to share. All that stuff is there. And it hasn't been eliminated in the New Testament because we're too busy reading Witness Lee's ministry to waste our time with that stuff. That is a false teaching. Consider this. The church is supposed to judge angels someday. The church is going to bring justice to the universe someday. So when are we going to start doing that? How can we bring justice to the universe by judging angels and we can't judge the evil that's in the world today and deal with it somehow? Think about human trafficking. Who is going to end human trafficking? The unbelievers? Is that who we should depend on? We're expecting God to somehow indirectly work through the unbelievers to stop human trafficking? Think of any justice you've seen done, recently or historically, and ask yourself, how is that accomplished? Did the unbelievers do it? Did it happen accidentally? Was it an afterthought? Or was it something that was the outworking of the influence of the church and God's truth on the world? Think of the defeat of Nazism. Think of the collapse of communism. How did that happen? Neither of them would have happened if the church had not been in the world. It's just a wrong-headed view to think that God is not working in a way where his truth and what is just and right and good is not spreading on the earth now. Good and justice and righteousness and holiness come through the church. And it's ridiculous to sit there and think, we are God's expression. We are the expression of God's life and nature and have absolutely no impact on the world around you. That is a dream. That is a fantasy. It's time to wake up and smell the coffee. You can serve God in a lot of different ways, and political and social activism are legitimate ways to do so if the Lord leads. So, feel free to get involved, and I would suggest to the co-workers of the Lord's Recovery in North America that you would open your minds and see the potential for involvement and look around and see all the good that has been done, especially the good that you yourself enjoy right now that was won by people who are willing to become active. And drop your narrow concepts and let the Lord work and let the kingdom come because it's coming in his people. It'll come in his people before Jesus comes back. And if it doesn't come in his people, then his return will be delayed. That's it for this time. Happy New Year, everybody. Take care.